Hey, I'm Nixie and you're watching OS Salt, your source for open source. I am so happy that you guys like my new series. If you check, you're probably running Bash, so it's super important that you get an understanding of it. After all, where there's a shell, there's a way. That's corny. Just to recap, in my last video we learned about what Bash really is, the history of it, exploring the command prompt, and really getting nitty gritty with a command itself and breaking down the parts to find out what it means. So if you haven't taken a look at that, go do so now, I think it's totally worth a watch. Once you're done with that, I think it's time for us to do a quick and dirty run through of the most common thing by far that you'll be doing in Bash, navigating the shell. Now I know that sounds scary, navigating the shell, but if you've ever moved, copied, or done pretty much anything with the files in your computer, you've navigated the shell. Congratulations. It's just in Bash, you navigate more with the keyboard than the mouse. To show a good example, I will concentrate on my llama obsession, and the home directory is pretty cluttered, and we should ls in the terminal to take care of that right quick. Now this lists all the files that we have in the current working directory, and these llama pictures really don't belong there. So let's try the mkdir command, and we'll make a directory. We'll have a pen for the llamas to go in. Yeah, see what I did there? And typically with a graphical user interface, we would select all the files in question and drag and drop. But you know what? We're not going to do that. In the end, this is going to be a lot more powerful. We need to move, so we're going to cd. Just change the directory and go into the llama pen. And if you just type cd with no arguments, it takes you back to your home directory, so that's super easy. You see that I use ls a lot, and you really have to. You can't see the file list otherwise, so yeah, that's the deal with that. Now we're using the move command, mv, and it will move all the files to the last argument. And in case you don't know this, if you just have an idea of the way that your file is spelt in the directory and you hit tab, it auto-completes, so use it, love it, I do. But of course that Nixie pixel llama picture is absurdly long and we'll take care of that in a little bit. But for now, we herded all the llamas into their pen, and it's time to get back to that pesky unmanageable file. There's no real rename command in bash, but you'll find that the move command works excellently for it, even easier I think. Just begin the file name in question, tab to autocomplete, and then space, so you need to put your second argument, which is the file you want to rename it, and mine's topsy.jpg. Just ls to see if the rename worked, and lo and behold, good old topsy. Copying is just as easy, with a space we have topsy copied. But even I can have too many llama pictures, and in which case you go for one of the dangerous commands and that's remove. You have to do it, but there's ways of safeguarding yourself, like what I have here. As you can see, once you use remove, it permanently deletes the file. There is no trash can, there is no undo. For that, I strongly recommend you implement this safeguard. It's just one line of code, but it could mean the matter of deleting all the things or not. It just returns a prompt, are you sure you want to delete this? And that is really great. Now for shell scripts. They're more complex than the commands I just talked about, and they're great for when you find yourself doing the same thing over and over again. Here I'm showing you bash rc in an editor, and scrolling down to that alias command we just did that helps keep us safe from accidentally removing things. See how we went full circle? Those are my most used commands for navigating the shell, and you will use them forever till the end of time. So. Now that we've covered shell navigation, we're ready to move on to options. Now options are added into a basic command as a type of modifier to change how the command functions. So earlier we talked about the anatomy of a basic command. You have the command and then the arguments. Now options are powerful and super easy to add into an existing command like this. To use an example of what we just worked on, type ls. So we're listing some files. Now let's add options to the mix. They're usually prefixed with a dash or two and look something like this. ls-a. A stands for all, which is an option that lists all normal files and hidden files. They're marked with a period before it. Now options have two forms. Short form, like the one I just used, has one dash and one letter. Then long form options have two dashes and a word. Use them interchangeably, whatever works for you. And don't worry, if you ever get stuck on a command, you can use an option to help you out. And it'll typically show you a use case of the command in question. But for the info file, the manual has much more detailed descriptions. So go ahead, experiment by pulling up the man page and reading all the options available to you. Bash is full of unending options and untold power. And kitties. 
Over the last few months, I've been bugging you about what your favorite command line essentials are, and I've been blown away by your fantastic responses. You know, come to think of it, I could do tons of videos involving your favorite commands in Bash, so let me know what that is, and don't worry, if you don't know Bash like this bird here in Thailand, that's okay. Just let me know if you have any questions at all, and I will do my best to answer them, because I am always 110% here for you guys. I know that I've been all over the place lately while on my Asia trip, but I'm just trying really hard for you guys. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next episode of All Things Open Source. And I'm gonna try to do some live shows. We'll see how that goes. And that rhymed. Oh, check for bloopers after the break. Oh God, I'm getting digested by mosquitoes. Hey guys, since my Japan video, a lot of you have asked how this baby works, the fly grip. I know it looks like a simple accessory, but it's really changed how I use all my mobile devices. You're not confined to whatever shape or size your phone is. The fly grip really adapts to you and you can use it how you want it. And you can gesture wildly with this. That's another fun thing. I take photos better, I multitask better. I have fly grip on both my tablet and my cell phone and it, the grip has kept strong even though I've taken it off and put it back on again. So. It's pretty awesome. And most importantly, for my clumsy self, I can do this. Having a fly grip almost completely prevents this from happening. And that's worth its weight in gold. So head on over to flygrip.com. You have a 60 day money back guarantee. And don't forget to enter Nixie at checkout so you get a free case and free shipping. How do you fly grip? The birds are so happy too. You just, you just threw that at your face. Yeah.